Welcome back to Cursed Mining and today we are taking a look at Hive on custom firmware for ASIC miners, especially for Bitcoin miners. We'll take a look at the software, an overview of the functions as well as my opinions after testing it. Before we start, I want to say that this video is not sponsored. Hive did reach out and they did give me remote access to the miner you'll be seeing in order to make this video. Other than that, I'm not getting anything from this. All opinions are my own. An Antminer T17 got added to my personal HiveOS dashboard for the time of testing. Thanks again. First thing, of course, is to set it up to mine so that I can also check all the information from poolside as well. Here, if you ever had a GPU mining rig on Hive, it won't differ from what you are used to. And even if not, you basically construct a flight sheet for the miner, giving it pool and user info same as you would do in the classical ASIC dashboard. Foremost, I want to focus on the functions that are not so easy with original firmware, depending on your ASIC. First of all, yes, it's just a simple way to monitor your ASICs in one place and do changes with quick simple clicks as you could just switch between your different flight sheets or overclock settings. You can monitor your hash rate, power, temperature and most importantly of course status of the miner itself. Besides that, Hive is Linux based, so depending on your knowledge, you could use commands you are used to through a terminal. Overclocking is another important factor to mention, as with some original firmware, this is completely locked if you don't go for a workaround. Custom software is one of these workarounds. Here, it's easy to change settings and try to squeeze a bit more hash rate out of your miner or achieve a more efficient setup. In terms of the T17 we got for testing, the lowest you could go would be 31.7 terahash a second at 1050 watts, up until hardcore overclocks only recommended with immersion cooling, that's 59 terahashes at a whopping 3600 watts. Impressive options. One thing that is missing here for me and other ASIC firmware does offer is individual voltage control on hashboards. We have featured that in the past, for example in our Bliss firmware video. It would still be updated along the way of course, and you have to decide for yourself if that detail is a deal breaker for you or other advantages outweigh it. Also, I want to point out the watchdog. That's a little implemented system that automatically restarts your miner. If it starts lagging in any way or it falls under a hash rate, you can set yourself. This is another advantage to the original software where you need to monitor individually or also restart manually. Same counts for temperature. You can set a critical temperature to shut down or restart. But I have to say that this also counts for Antminer standard firmware. It can also do that. The difference is still though that with Hive automatic fan control is added as well, which is always nice. You see some more functions than you would normally have in your ASIC firmware. What about my personal opinion after testing it some time? We'll discuss that first before talking about the pricing as well. I gotta say I like it. Yes, it's a bit of centralization in terms of monitoring your miners. And yes, you have to trust the company itself. For now, there never was anything wrong. And I've been using HiveOS for almost three years now. If you stay aware that you are still using someone else's software, then yes, it's nice to have your miners in one place. Remote managing of ASICs can sometimes not be so easy. Or you need hardware tools to achieve that, like say smart plugs or PDUs with rebooting functions. So in this case, and if you agree to the developer fee, it's easy. You can do everything from any browser. Ideally, also activate two-factor authentication in your account for further safety, and you're good to go. The hash rate given in the dashboard was accurately received on poolside as well. One important test I wanted to do. If the power given is accurate, I could unfortunately not test as I don't have the physical miner in hand. As mentioned, some features are still missing compared to some other firmware, say stuff like individual hashboard control. 
but as there is extensive overclocking and underclocking available, I don't think it as that bad. Other than that, I like the firmware in combination with the HiveOS dashboard. Many GPU miners are used to that anyway. In the end, also to discuss costs and one thing, yes, there is a HiveOS referral link in my description. I can proudly say I have referred 75 people to Hive and I have not earned one cent from it. This means all of these people are using it for free, which Hive is now up to 4 systems instead of 3 like before. That's 4 GPU rigs in HiveOS. For ASICs, if you use the Hive One firmware, they are for free. But the software itself does have a 2% developer fee. So this is something you have to keep in mind. That's already it folks, software video today. Taking a look at HiveOne firmware for ASICs with an example of the Antminer T17. Again, thanks to Hive for giving me access for testing the miner. What do you folks think? Would you test the firmware programmed by someone else than the manufacturer? Or do you always go stock? Oh, and if you have been using Hive for your ASICs already, please share some of your experiences in the comments below. Thank you very much for tuning in again. Please subscribe for weekly crypto and mining content. I wish all the best to each and every one of you. Happy mining and bye.